Spirit of truth, be with us. God of all time, help us to see ourselves in the larger narrative of your divine creation. Beloved Christ, may the meditations of our hearts and minds be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Beloved siblings in Christ, grace and peace to you from the God who gifts us with life, Christ who lives among us, and the Spirit who lights our way. Amen. We gather this week in the midst of the Christmas season, y'all. We're still there. We still get to hear the stories of Christ's birth in the weeks following our big celebrations. In the wake of those four weeks of Advent, in the wake of our gatherings on Christmas Eve, in the wake of that silent night, in the wake of our own commercialized experience of Christmas with our loved ones and friends, we're left with these beautiful stories of the Christ child as he comes into the world. In this place, the glow of Christmas joy doesn't fade away just because the Christmas music has stopped playing on the radio and that the stores have already put out the St. Patrick's Day decorations. No, we remain in the midst of the Christmas season with this week's stories of seeking, listening, and searching. And what better characters to highlight this story of seeking and searching than the wise men, right? They get a whole Christmas carol to themselves that we just sang a moment ago as we celebrate their journey from lands far away to the places of Jerusalem and Bethlehem. Can you imagine how much endurance it would have taken them to get from point A to point B? They would have been traveling for camel on camels and by foot for many, many miles, for many, many days without use of GPS to get them there. They had to rely on that star and hope that they were going in the right direction. Eventually, however, their hard work is rewarded and their arrival in Bethlehem to meet the Christ child. Their many weeks and months of travel culminates in meeting this young one who will completely alter the history of the world forever. However, I will say that leaving gold, frankincense, and myrrh was likely a very kind gesture to this child who they knew would one day be king. But as some folk on social media have imagined in the last few weeks, <clears throat> I think Mary and Joseph also had a few other visitors who were called to that place after the wise men departed. Yes, also called by God and led by the star to that place, the wise women arrived in that place soon after to deliver extra diapers, baby formula, and a few casseroles for the Holy Family because they knew exactly what that family needed in that moment. Holy God, we thank you for the wisdom of women who know how to show up when the men around them are too focused on pomp and circumstance. Regardless of whether you find yourself identifying with the wise men in this story or the imagined wise women, these wise people were listening for the voice of God in their midst. And this voice shows up for them in a variety of ways and throughout this story in a variety of ways, through dreams, through their ability to see through a king's deceitful words, through the voices of angels, and through the voice of scripture. And these people's ability to filter out the voice of the divine from the rest of the voices in the world, I think we can understand two particular things about these people, about the character of the wise people and the character of Joseph and his family. First, these people are brave. While there might stand to be fear and trembling at the voice of an angel coming to you in a dream or taking the word of scripture as something compelling for you in a particular moment, these people held their fear alongside their faith so that they might answer God's call. Second, yet related to this bravery, stands these characters' willingness to go out of their way for the sake of others. Traveling many miles to pay homage to the newborn Christ child, fleeing with one's family to a foreign land for the sake of safety, directly undermining the command of a ruler so that you might protect a young child. These actions were not 
self-serving, but served those around them. And so that leads us to a point of reflection this morning. How does the call to these wise people and to Joseph mirror and reinforce our call to serve the people around us? How can we best keep our ears tuned in to God calling us to be serving in the world? Well, first, our actions might mirror the actions of the wise people in today's gospel story in the celebration of a new kind of ruler among them, a ruler who will bring about a new understanding of what it means to live with one another in joy. While many people at that time might have thought that this ruler to come would fulfill the prophecies of restoring the nation of Israel to its former sense of power and glory, we all know that Jesus' story doesn't end in that way. It ends with crucifixion. But actually, we know it doesn't end with crucifixion, but ends with resurrection. A fact that doesn't do the work of restoring this people to the power that they once had, but instead brings about a new sense of power in the world. Christ's presence in the world is expected. People knew he was coming, yet the work of Jesus in and among us is completely unexpected. Thus, our sense of seeking the work of Christ in the world should be such that we aren't holding on to the expectations of old, but instead remaining openness, open to the unexpectedness of God working among us. And yes, that, that might instill in us a small or even large sense of fear, and especially a fear of failure. But these ways of being in the world, seeking out the unexpectedness, are faithful to our call to celebrate Christ's call for us. On the other hand, our actions might mirror the work of Joseph as he took the word of the divine messenger to heart and uprooted his family as he took them to a safe place. While some in our world are living that reality right now, our experience might not be as drastic. This call can be distilled down to a much simpler idea, to a call to care for our loved ones. In this season of Christmas and New Year's, we often have the opportunity to be, to be present with our families and friends for extended periods of time, for better or for worse. In the midst of all these interactions, we might find it exceedingly difficult to care for and love on our family or our chosen family. Yet our actions for the sake of these family members should reflect the same love and self-sacrifice that Joseph demonstrates towards his beloved family. I will put one caveat on this point. Family dynamics can be tricky sometimes, y'all. Sometimes family dynamics are such that engaging in care for the other might cause irreparable harm to us or others. And in those situations, we have to le learn to lean in to God's grace to really understand how to best respond. Simply put, care for oneself and for others and our wholeness should take precedence. Finally, our actions might follow those of the many people in this story as their work in answering God's call protects those who are unable to protect themselves. In Joseph's departure to Egypt and the wise people's unwillingness to return to King Herod, they shield people who would otherwise be harmed by the crushing grasp of one who is hungry for power. In a perfect world, these actions of such people would have protected many more than just the Holy Family, so that the lives of the many innocent children near Bethlehem would not be lost in King Herod's anger. We are invited to be voices and advocates for just such a world, a world in which unnecessary violence and acts of powerful rage are cut off by those whose compassion and care for one's neighbor take the day. Wherever we see people unable to advocate for their own safety, for their own well-being, for their own life, we are invited and called as followers of Christ and followers of Christ's love 
to speak up for their sake, for the hungry, for the abused, for the oppressed, for the underpaid, for the fearful. For each of these, our call is to radical care, generous hospitality, and abundant love. Thus, we are invited to listen for Christ's call to us to serve one another in the world. As this Christmas season draws to a close and we step into the season of Epiphany, we re- may we remember the whole story of this young child who would be king. May we remember our call to be mindful of how our actions reflect the love and care the characters in today's gospel story show and to which Christ's life witnesses. In the face of fear, may we lean in to God's abundant grace, hope, and love. Amen.